Hello YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal bringing you another video today on why I love and hate Omega specifically. I want to give you guys a little change of pace from the typical Rolex videos that you'll see either on my channel or on YouTube and uh, talk about what I feel is a brand that's on the up and up that's been doing a lot of good but unfortunately still has a few things and a few kinks I think that they need to work out to really go to the next level. So starting with what I love, I really do feel that Omega has replaced Rolex as the technologically superior brand. So for me personally, I've always loved Rolex watches. I think that their designs are ultimately tried and tested, they're timeless, they're classic, and you could say the same as well with their movements. I mean, their new 332 kind of 100 calibers have only changed one thing really from the 3100 calibers, which is the hairspring. So they're using, I believe, what's called the parachrome hairspring. So it's a little bit more anti-magnetic and they're using a different uh, lever escapement because it ultimately reduces kind of the friction between parts and increases the service interval of their watches. But apart from that, I mean, in terms of their movements, their designs, they've pretty much stayed true to uh, true to form. And, and what I what you see in Omega is a watch brand that has been taking, at least as of the last kind of decade, a lot more risks in terms of the design, in terms of their watches, and mostly in terms of their movements. I mean, the technology that's coming out of these watches, especially as it relates to the coaxial escapement, for me personally, I think it is something to be applauded by Omega. Now, the one thing I will say, unfortunately, is they don't use that technological savviness in the right way, in the way that they release models, but it is something to be applauded. You know, you see Rolex kind of in a safeguard, whereas Omega is kind of pushing the boundary in terms of what they can produce and where they're headed for the future. So I think that's definitely something to be applauded, applauded from uh, Omega, for sure. The second thing I would say is also that they've been coming out more and more with a greater diversity of models. And I think that's actually incredible from Omega. I'm looking forward to hopefully a version of the Omega Seamaster 300 Professional, uh, the Seamaster Professional, of course, in a kind of GMT version like they used to do in the past with the sword hands, but now kind of with the updated version, I'm hoping for a thin case, something that's very wearable, that has a tapering bracelet, and that has kind of a, a an adjustable bracelet as well. And I think that would be an amazing watch that would just go through the roof in terms of demand and would be a solid competitor, in my opinion, to the Rolex GMT range and the Explorer 2 range, which I feel are probably one of one of the few GMT watches available that are really worth considering. Now, I do know they have the, the, the Planet Ocean GMT as well, which is a great watch, but it is a bit chunky. I think it's about 14 or 15 millimeters thick, and it is 43 millimeters uh, in terms of its case diameter. So I do feel it's just a little bit too big. I hope that they come out with a slightly slimmer GMT option that's also in a smaller case. So I think the diversity with respect to their models are absolutely fantastic. Another thing you're seeing Omega doing is they're updating their bracelet and they're listening to their consumers. So uh, Omega ultimately updated the new Speedmaster. I thought that the bracelet on it would be a letdown because I wasn't sure in terms of how like how fluid or how kind of how much play it would have. And it actually turns out that uh, if you guys watch Showcase Watches' his review of the Omega Speedmaster, uh, the 3861 Speedmaster, he actually addressed all those issues and said, listen, what they're trying to, and he really hit the nail on the head when he said this, that they're trying to replicate kind of a vintage charm in their bracelet, but with kind of the modern sensibility and the modern build quality of a uh, kind of modern bracelet. And, and I couldn't agree more with that in that I think they actually knocked it out of the park with that bracelet. It tapers quite well. Even if the clasp is a little small, I do feel that it actually is proportionate to the watch. And I think overall, it does help make the watch wear in a more vintage aesthetic, which ultimately I feel is perfect for the, C the Speedmaster, which is kind of more of a vintage inspired watch and a watch that is, I guess, more of a vintage design. So those are the things that I currently love about Omega. But of course, Omega is not without its faults. So let's get into those. Now, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Omega Unlimited Editions. Now, thankfully, they've stopped doing as many limited editions as they used to in the past. However, I still feel that they're being troubled by these limited editions. Now they just changed the name from limited edition to special edition. And personally, I really don't like that. I feel that these kind of 
games where they're they're playing really semantic games, changing the words limited edition to special edition. I mean, you're not really fooling anybody. Let's be honest. It's still a limited edition. I'm sure you got a kind of ballpark range of how many of those watches you want to you want to create whenever you're doing a special edition uh, launch. So so like don't lie to the consumer. I think we're 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 not we're not we're not that dumb. Like we we know what you're doing, Omega. But listen, it is what it is. At least they're not doing limited edition after limited edition which is to be applauded. The next thing I would say is, I think that Omega has so many opportunities with those limited edition watches uh, to make watches that I think would be so incredible for their ranges that they just miss the ball completely. So one example is they made an Omega Seamaster. It's the boutique edition. I'll put it up on screen, obviously. And I think it's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful watch. It's got a Beautiful. I like in particular the London edition, which has a beautiful fume blue dial. I think that is a perfect, perfect watch. It is just gorgeous. It's got a beautiful sapphire case back, uh, an exhibition case back on the back of it. I think if they put that watch on a slim, but obviously well built metal bracelet, it would be a perfect Omega entry level Omega. So an Oyster Perpetual or or some kind of like a Datejust equivalent. I think that is just an absolutely gorgeous watch. And what did they do? Not only did they make it a limited edition, they made it a special edition and they made it regionally exclusive. So you could only get it within specific countries. I believe they made it for London, for Singapore, uh, one for the Middle East, for New York and a bunch of other places. But um, yeah, I think that is a ph phenomenal watch that Omega really just missed the boat on. And uh, really uh, messed it up on that one. I really think that would have been a perfect entry level model. The second thing worth mentioning is purely my opinion. And that is faux patina. Guys, I am not a fan of faux patina at all. I don't know what it is. I really just don't like the look of faux, faux patina. The one watch I do think it actually looks good on is the No Time to Die Seamaster. But apart from that, I really don't like faux patina. The reason being is that faux patina to me is kind of... Um, a cheap way of imitating a vintage watch. Let's put it that way. So the whole point of what makes, in my opinion, patina kind of collectible is the fact that it's, it's aged through, through time. And that process can be replicated, in my opinion, through a laboratory. I think it needs to be done out in natural sunlight. It needs to be done out and about. I think that the watch has so much more charm when it's patina naturally as opposed to kind of in a laboratory and it's a and it's patina through faux patina. I, I just dislike it tremendously. But again, that's just my personal opinion. I just don't personally like faux patina at all. So that's another thing I wish that Omega avoided doing. But hey, it, it is the direction that they've been going. And I do understand it because Showcase brought up a good point in that once they're starting to actually use anodized aluminum a lot more because it's got kind of the, the vintage properties uh, or the vintage characteristics of aluminum, but it's a lot more hard wearing. And so the idea is when that watch changes or ages over time, what you'll get is a beautifully aged watch with that patina to, to match it. And so it's actually going to look quite nice. And I would tend to agree with that. I just think that it's a cheap way to to kind of put age into a watch as opposed to kind of acquiring that that natural age through time. So so that's just, again, my personal opinion. It might not be for you guys. You might like faux patina, but that is just me. I really dislike faux patina. And last but not least, I have to mention one last thing, which is unfortunately the bracelets. Now, I know that they've been improving tremendously in terms of their bracelets, and I actually don't dislike a lot of their bracelets. The one thing I would say is I just wish that they tapered a little bit more. They've actually been doing it a lot, uh, especially with the new Speedmaster. I think they're they're kind of catching on that, listen, their current bracelets maybe aren't up to par when compared to, for example, Rolex. Now, I know, I know, and I know that 10 years ago or 15 years ago, Omega bracelets were far superior to Rolex, but Rolex addressed those issues and are now, I would say, probably the best maker of bracelets on the market. And I really do believe that if Omega can fix kind of their bracelet issues and taper them more kind of in, in a way that that is more usable and user friendly i think it could really make the brand and their watches go into the next stratosphere in terms of collectability so those are just what i kind of my thoughts on omega why i love them why i hate them i think that the technology 
is fantastic. I think that the direction that they're currently headed in is also amazing. I think that in the future you could really see Omega as a solid contender because one thing I'll say is that I think Omega have kind of accepted their place in the watch industry. I don't feel that they're so much trying to compete anymore with Rolex as they used to. So I think that is a step in the right direction. The one thing that I will say, and again, I've been seeing this more and more, is that there are less and less Omega authorized dealers and there are more and more Omega boutiques. And what that's pointing to is that Omega is kind of taking the Audemars Piguet road where there's not going to be, or at least, again, this is pure speculation on my part. I don't really have any kind of facts to verify it, but I've been seeing online a lot more Omega boutiques being opened up and less and less AD partnerships coming about. And I think the reason is they kind of want to go kind of boutique exclusive watches. Now, how do I feel about that? I think it might be a mistake if that's the, the route they, they decide to go down because we could run into potential problems with AD games, boutique games in this case, where like you're going to have to buy certain watches to get models and stuff like that. If they do start to do that, I really think that will be a mistake that will crush Omega because at the end of the day, I think Omega is viewed, at least from my perspective as a watch enthusiast, as the brand to get outside of kind of Rolex, right? It is the watch enthusiast brand because they make great watches for the prices and at their price point, I really don't see anyone else compete, at least on their, their gray market prices, I really don't see anybody competing with them effectively. I think their watches are just a notch above everybody at the price range they sell for on the gray market. So those are just my opinions. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I love to get your takes. Uh, and of course, guys, feel free to like the video to subscribe for more in the future. Guys, I'm going to link down below the showcase watches is a review of the 3861 Speedmaster. It was a great review. There's a lot of insight. It's a hands-on review. So not like these other guys who are just giving their opinion on YouTube while sitting in a chair. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> but I do love the review. So guys, make sure to check out that video. Like and subscribe to his channel as well. Guys, my name is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal and I'll see you guys in the next one.